I'd like you to have your laptop there or device with Desmos open. Then you should have exercise 1210 beside you. Now 1210s are fairly short exercise, especially when you do it the way we're about to do it, which is with the aid of some technology. So I want you to have a look at the very first question, and I'm going to show you how to think about this and interpret it. So it starts off. It says, graph each pair of equations and find their point of intersection. Okay, freeze. I have a question for you. Intersection, what does that mean? If someone had never met, heard the word intersection, what would you use to describe it? William, what would you say? Intersection is where two things cross paths together. That's perfect, right? If you're driving along and you hit an intersection, it's where your road it crosses paths with another road. Okay, so what we're looking for is these straight lines that we're getting from these equations are going to cross paths with each other. They're going to intersect. Okay? Now you can see I have already, and I invite you to do the same, I've already graphed the first equation in the first question 1a. y equals x. And then you can see they provide you with a second equation which will give us a second straight line. So go over into Desmos and you can see if you hit enter, you can put a new line in there and you'll see both at the same time. The second one has an equation, y equals, what is it? y equals what? Negative y. Yep, negative x negative. plus 2. Okay. Now, can I get a show of hands? Who has this on their screen right now? Who's up to speed? Yep, hands up, hands up, hands up. About half the class. Okay, thank you, hands down. Alright. Now, before we inspect this, I just want to pause on some of the language that we learned before, okay? So have a look at our equations that you can see here. y equals x, y equals negative x plus 2. There were two words that we looked at last lesson that were super important and we're going to use them again and again. They both started with the letter C. One is called the coefficient and one is called the constant. Very good. Can you help me work out, let's look at this second one, what's the constant in this second equation? Two. The constant is? Two. It's 2. It's this number over here, right? A bit trickier. What's the coefficient in that same question? That's tricky. The coefficient's the number that's attached to the x, which in this case is a negative 1. We don't write the 1 because it kind of doesn't change anything. It's the same size, okay? What about the first equation? What's the constant in the first equation? It's sort of hiding, right? It's plus 0. That's why we don't write it. It doesn't change anything. What's the coefficient in the first one? It's just 1. It's just hiding there. 1 times x is just x. That's why it's not written. Okay. Now, this is what you've got. Have a look in closer into your two graphs here. And what we want is that point where they, as William said, cross paths. That's the point of intersection. So have a look. Can you guys read off for me? What's the x coordinate of this point? It's 1. You can read it there. And what's the y coordinate? Coincidentally, it's the same. So go ahead in question 1a. We write the coordinates, don't forget, in a very particular way to indicate that it's a point, right? Those two values that you just gave me, the x coordinate is the first number and the y coordinate is the second number. We separate them with a comma and we've got those two parentheses around to indicate this is a point, okay? Now I'm going to give you a second to have a look at 1b. There's two different equations there and I invite you, rather than having like a million equations here, which is going to be very confusing, just change these two equations, the ones that are there at the moment, they're probably red and blue like mine. Go ahead and adjust those two so that they match the question, or rather the equations in part B. Can you do that? And then see if you can find the point of intersections. You are. Okay, so um, have a look up. Has what, have you, what you've got on your screen, does it match this? Is that what it looks like? Maybe your red and your blue are swapped over, it doesn't really matter which one's which, okay? So this time again, we've got a point of intersection. What is the point of intersection? What are its coordinates? One, two. one comma two, very good. Again, the first value is the x, which is horizontal. There's the one, which we can see up there. And your second value is the two. Okay, now here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to finish question one. Again, use the technology every time. But what I want you to lastly do is, and this is why I asked you to have rulers, I want you to choose one of the questions, A, B, C, D, E, or F. I don't mind which one you choose. And I want you to physically draw that one in your book. You don't have to draw all six. You can use technology for all six. But I do want you to physically draw at least one of them in question one into your book. Show the two lines. Show the point of intersection. I'll let you choose which one you want. Okay. When we have a look at questions two and three, I don't want you to just march through. I want you to think about it in a particular way. So look at it with me. It says... 
Question two, what's the point of intersection? And then they provide you with two lines, just like we've been looking at before. In some ways, that's exactly like question one. No big deal. So you can go ahead with that in a second. Question three, though, it's a bit differently, different. Can you have a look at it with me? It says, solve each equation graphically. Now, when we say graphically, what we mean is like this, with the aid of graphics, by graphing them. And you can see what the solutions are and then read what it is. Okay? The weird thing is, if you have a look closely at question three, the parts look very different from what we've got. There's no y equals this. There's no y equals that. You've just got x's. Here's what they mean. Open your lids up again. And instead of the two equations you had before, replace them with the left-hand side and the right-hand side of those two equations, or the one equation you can see in question three. So for example, in fact, I can even get rid of the y equals. In the top line, I'm just going to write the left-hand side of the equation in 3a, which says, 2x, is it? 2x minus 1. Okay. Now, when you put in 2x minus 1 by itself, Desmos is guessing that you mean y equals this. And that's why you can see a graph, right? This is the 2x minus 1 part of the graph. Then we can put on the line beneath the right-hand side of the equation. It's x plus 2. x plus 2. Two. Now you may need to, as, just like I do, you may need to move the part of your graph that is visible so you can see the point of intersection. You might need to zoom out as well. Eventually you'll see, can you help me, whoops, can you help me read off what the solution is for this? What's the, what's the coordinates? Where's the point of intersection? Three, three, five. Three, three, five, right? So I can write that down, three, comma, five, but I want to ask you guys, which number is which? Which one's the x and which one's the y? This is the x, right? This is the y. Now, look back at the original question. Do you notice it doesn't have any y's in it? That's what I was highlighting. So which of these numbers do I really care about? Look at the question. It's a question that's all about what pronoun rule? It's all about x, right? So therefore, I use this and I say the part that I'm focusing on is the x. Now, question four underneath asks you to confirm this just by doing it with algebra, which we can do right now. Pick up your pen. Uh, these equation, this equation was 2x, what was it, minus 1 equals x plus 2. Is that right? Okay. Now, if we didn't have a graph, we could just solve this as an equation. We could probably take two steps. What could be something we do to both sides to make this simpler? Anve, what do you see? We switch the minus 1 and the x. We switch the minus 1 and the x. So I'm guessing what you mean is... How do we switch, by the way? Like, I don't want this minus 1 to be here. What do I do to both sides to get rid of it? Minus 1 hmm. Ah, that's interesting. I actually could multiply by minus 1, but it would just turn it into a plus 1. So it would sort of still be there. The rest of you said we could add 1. That'll get rid of this here. Which would make this not plus 2. When you add 1 to both sides, it'll become plus 3. And then I need one more step. What was the other thing I need to do? Anush. Ah, minus 2. Now, I have a 2 here, but actually there's, there's kind of a different operation hiding there, right? What's the operation that's hiding? It's multiplication. What's the thing I use to undo that? Division, right? So I should divide both, oh, if I divide both sides by 2, I would get more x's over here. I, I think we could subtract x, right? So I'm going to subtract x from here, and then I'm going to subtract x from here. What do we get? Which is what we confirmed earlier. Okay.